Erica and Sharon are sisters who began their grief journey in 2006 when Erica's 10-year-old son Austin drowned. Together, they participated in a grief education program were so moved by this experience, they studied and became specialists so they could help the brokenhearted find recovery. In 2015, tragedy struck their family once again when Erica's oldest son, Donovan, was killed in a motorcycle accident. Erica and Sharon are committed to sharing their experiences of love, loss, and healing through this podcast. Now your grief specialists, Sharon and Erica. So I remember, uh, distinctly remember after Austin died and then it came back again for me when Donovan died and it came back again for me when daddy died, it was this overwhelming exhaustion and that I would sleep later. Some, some nights I was up all night because I would be crying by myself in my little grief area. And so I thought it was that. But even the thought of just getting in my car and going to the grocery store sounded exhausting. Uh, I would get up and get the house cleaned out and then I would go back to bed and lay down. I felt tired all the time. It was almost like I couldn't get out, couldn't get enough energy, couldn't get enough energy, couldn't get enough energy. And I didn't recognize it for what it was. I kept trying to push through, but the truth was I had to keep going back to bed. We just shared this with a client this week because she is staying in bed longer than she ever has before. And it's worrying her husband. And she's been worried about it too, because she's said she didn't want to get stuck in the debilitating depression. The exhaustion is so normal because grief consumes every fiber of your being. Having to get out of bed, brush your teeth, make breakfast for your littles, makes it, you you feel the same amount of tiredness as if you would have run a full marathon because you are trying to live while grieving and it's consuming every cell, every uh, m- uh, chromosome, Try, trying to go to biology and remember the parts of the body, <laughs> every hair follicle. Grief is consuming every pore in your skin. It's like, it's just, it's like you've been taken over by uh, an alien. Yeah. You're so tired. And I want to say that that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah. That's exactly where you're supposed to be. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to break down a couple of the reasons, Erica. We'll do them one topic at a time, why it's so exhausting. But I, I want you to understand, friends, is that that's where you're supposed to be. One of the things, the misconceptions about grief is that there's these stages of grief that Erica and I debunk all the time. And one of the stages of grief is this depression. So let me help you out with this. Number one, grieving is depressive. It is very depressive. I haven't met anyone that was happy to be grieving or joyous to be grieving or excited about their grieving. It's another reason why um, when you go to the doctor, the first thing they wanna do is write a prescription for the depression. You may not have even hit the depressive state and they're writing the prescription already because they don't know what else to do for you. Bless their hearts. They don't know what to do. So they're going to write a prescription for you. Uh, One of the side effects of being depressed is being tired. So the feeling of being tired or not having motivation and there's degrees of that, not having motivation, being exhausted, just being tired and the sleeping, which is also helpful at some points. So you've got to kind of decide, okay, here it is. Number one, Erica, What kind of tired are you? What kind of tired are you in your grief? Are you exhausted? Are you physically exhausted? Because that absolutely can happen. Are you depressed and just not wanting to deal with it? And so you want to put the covers over your head because it's the one place that you can get the respite from the grief. Are you not motivated to do the things that you normally would do because of your grief? Or are you depressed? There's so many different degrees in there into what kind of tired are you? 
And I feel like to get a to get a doctor to say that you are depressed post a grieving experience, I feel like that's the complete inopportune time to have to go get an evaluation for depression because it's extremely challenging to decipher between what's grief and what is depression. I feel like prior to your grief grieving event, if you had a diagnosis of depression, then it doesn't, it gets definitely exacerbated by the grief, but I don't think it's the right time post grief grieving event to go get that diagnosis. I think you need to put a serious amount of time in between the two. That's just one thought. Second, I am trying to go back. I was trying to go back to after Austin. After Donovan, I was physically exhausted. I was bone tired. After Austin, I don't, I don't remember being tired. I remember maybe, I remember a lot of times pulling, wanting to pull the covers over my head because of situations or things that sent me back to bed, triggers, triggers that would had sent me back to bed. And I just wanted to pull the cover over my head. But I don't remember being so tired as I was after Donovan died. Donovan, I just felt bone crushing tiredness all the time. I was all of the above. What was your list? Lack of motivation, physically exhausted, <laughs> depressed, uh, pulling covers. I was all the things, all the things after Donovan died. So going back to the beginning of your comment here, would you be wrong to say that grief is depressing? No, grief is depressing. No. Yeah. Right. Is and so it can almost look like you're in a full blown depressive right. uh, phase with when you're grieving. But that's what I'm saying to try to seek because people then want to label or diagnose themselves. I am depressed. I need to go see a doctor. And then they go to the doctor and then the doctor confirms. Yes. Oh, you're not eating. Oh, you're not sleeping. Oh, you're crying all the time. Yes, you are depressed. The doctor rarely factors in their grief. So then they get the yeah. prescription. I, I had someone reach out to me whose husband passed away. And she said, I think I need to go. Um, I talked to my doctor and they want to put me on an antidepressant. And I said, I don't know why you're not depressed. You are sad. You are grieving. If you were not taking an antidepressant prior to the grieving event, I don't feel it's the right time to get on it post grieving event is all I'm saying. I feel like you need to understand you are grieving. And like you said, grief is depressing. Yeah. And so the other thing is we would never go against a medical doctor who would want no. to put someone on medication, but we would encourage you to have every test out there known to man so that they can prove that it's depressing. Now we have worked with grievers that have their grief has prolonged. And one of the ways that they've gotten help is through getting medication. So, um, What's between you and your doctor, not between you and your grief specialist. So let's talk about, um, I had to put that out there. That's a disclaimer. That is so true. I mean, I-, I Possible think, ways. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So experiencing insomnia, Erica, you totally can relate to this. Yeah. If you're, insomnia is not difficulty falling asleep. That's the one thing you need to understand. It's not just difficulty falling asleep. That's not insomnia. Insomnia is difficult remaining asleep. And a lot of times what wakes you up is the grief. And the minute you wake up, there's like this, I always say the same way. There's this one second where you're like, oh, and you're yawning and you take that breath and then bam, the brain remembers and it sends it to the heart. Oh yeah, that happened. And the next thing you know, you're out of the bed and you're not sleeping. And sadly, it's like Groundhog's Day because it's every single day. Like you would think after a few days, after a week, after two weeks, you would wake up and be like, immediately that thing happened, but it's not. It's the same. You have the wake up and you hear the birds chirping for, like you said, a hot second. And then you're hit by a ton of bricks with the reality. Your loved one is not here anymore. They are yeah. not in your life anymore. You are divorced. You signed the papers yesterday. He's not coming home. He's not going to be here for Christmas. All the feelings, the full weight of the emotion. And yeah. yes, who can go back to sleep after that? You're like, well, 
And that was me. I would lay there in silence and I would hear Lewis was laying there in silence. And I would say to him, are you awake? And he'd say, yep. And we'd still just lay there in silence because there were no words to be said. Yeah. There was nothing that I could say to him that was going to ease his pain. And there was nothing he could say to me that was going to ease my pain. We were just awake. Yeah. The second one is that you're actually sleeping too much. Sleeping too much can cause you to feel tired even more. Sleeping too much because I want to get away from this pain. Because getting out of bed just by itself can seem overwhelming. When my eyes are closed and I am asleep, guess what? There's one thing that I'm not thinking about. I may be dreaming about it, but I'm not thinking about it. And that's the pain in my heart. And so a lot of times what we'll do is we try to escape that pain by sleeping and we'll oversleep to the point that it makes us exhausted. And then your body starts to become familiar with that. And you're constantly going back to sleep and back to sleep and back to sleep. I feel attacked. I just want to say that for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like and you these are, are the notes I have from Erica. <laughs> these are the notes I have from Erica's grieving experience. And also, I want to note, when you invest in a good nap, you should feel refreshed. I feel like it's the biggest ripoff to sleep all day and wake up and still be tired. For the record, I just yeah. want to put it there. <laughs> that's because you're not doing your nap properly, but that's a different show. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I, because I was staying up all night, and then when the kids would go to school and Lewis went back to work, zero motivation to do anything. So yeah. why not just go back to sleep? I'm already moping around the house. I might as well go to sleep and take a break from the pain. Yeah. Because the sleep yeah. is where the one place I did not feel the pain. And I would sleep all day. And the sleeping during the day adds to the insomnia at night. Oh, completely. It makes it so it's like a vicious cycle that's kind of happening there. It is. It's such, and it's such a, um, such a mind trick because you think by the more you're sleeping, the more you would feel rested, but you don't because then you're up all night. So it's just, it is a vicious cycle and it's, it's, it's crazy making because you kind of feel like you get stuck in the cycle and you don't know how to get off the, you don't know how to get off the ride. Right. In the beginning stages, another thing that adds to it is your change in routine. Some of us um, take the family leave. So we're not actually at work. There's also this uh, planning of the funeral. In many cases, there's a lot of family members that have come to visit or uh, you're going to visit other family members, right? even during the grieving experience to spend some time with them just to get away and get a clean attitude. So the, not a clean attitude, I'm sorry, a, a, a reprieve from your grief, but you get there and that's even exhausting. But just the change in your normal pattern of behavior can cause um, you to be very tired. Well, in, in putting forth the effort to plan the funeral, to make the phone calls, to close the bank account, that takes energy. And, yeah. and doing, if you do a few things in that, in a day or two after the tragedy, you're exhausted just from yeah, doing those one or two things because you have to concentrate. You have to concentrate so you can say the words that need to be said and convey the messages that need to be conveyed, make the appointments, go to the funeral home, pick out the clothes, pick out, which I gotta say that day is torturous. The planning of the funeral at the funeral home takes eight hours, at least. At least it, okay, I feel that's like a it, different podcast. I know. I'm just saying it, here. It, it, it took that long for us. And I don't know if that's a normal thing or whatever, but that is exhausting. Oh, yeah. It's totally you, exhausting. You, you, you feel like you've been browbeaten. Here, what color casket? Here, what about the inside? Do you want one flower yeah. holder or two? What do you want on the funeral card? It's, yeah. it's an ass whip. It really is. You need to yeah. be, you need to know that going in, you're going to come back and feel like you've just went through a Spanish inquisition. Well, 
Yes, I agree with you 100%. And that's why we talk a lot about people around you that are supporting you is that I try to um, downsize that as much as possible and say, do you want green or blue? Do you want round or square? Just bring yeah. you the two choices. I, I would do all of the investigation and then just bring you the two final choices. And that worked really well. One of the reasons that um, grieving is exhausting and tiring is that crying is tiring. Yeah. Crying takes out all your energy. Uh, that's just a side note. But the next example is that your mind is in overdrive. Your mind is in overdrive. One well, Number one thing that happens is a, a movie is playing in your head. The moment you've lost someone due to death or divorce or breakup of a romantic relationship, you start playing the movie in your head. And it's almost like the old fashioned reels it's like tick, 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 tick. And there's just these moments, right? That are playing in your head. And then all of a sudden your brain stops on slide number 21C. And that's you and him at the beach chasing the dog. And you're just watching that part of the movie. And then the next thing, the movie starts again. And it goes tick, 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 tick. And it stops on 48A. And that's the moment that you guys were at the doctor's office and he had to get his shot for the first time. All of those things in your head are playing and it's your brain is on overdrive, trying to figure out the funeral, trying to talk to people, understand what happened, do what's going on. It's just the constant going to the funeral home. It all adds into that. Yeah. And I want to piggyback on the, the movie reel. It's also fast forwarding to slide 520 B yeah. when you're chasing the dog on the beach by yourself and he's not there. Yeah. Yeah. And the anxiety that comes as a result of that or the depression, because you're in that slide by yourself, you're, you're doing that as well. Yeah. And I think I added in too early. So I want to add this one is that in expressing multiple emotions is exhausting allowing those emotions in are exhausting. So crying, I want to add in this section is exhausting. Also dealing with every trigger, Erica, that comes up. That's so exhausting. Yeah. I was just going to say fighting with the family members. Oh yeah. Freaking what? A, it's like, a, it's like a workout. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and dealing with the stupid comments. Oh yeah. yeah. So there's a second thing is that grievers are hypervigilant to everything that's going on around them. And I often describe it. It's as if someone came up and pulled all your skin off. All your skin is pulled off and all the only thing exposed are your nerve endings. So everything everyone says, everything everyone does, everything they talk about, all that's going on in the room around you, you are hyper aware to that. That takes every bit of energy you have just to stay in the moment, just to stay in a conversation. It takes every bit of energy you have, plus you're aware of everything that's going on around you and you start putting energy there where it doesn't need to be. We need to treat it like when you become a new mom and usually it's, it's your mom that tells you or, or the, el the elders, you know, the, the women in your life, when that baby sleeps, you need to sleep because that sleep deprivation, you don't realize how serious that is until yeah. you become a new mom, but you're so excited to be a new mom. All you want to do is sit there and stare at the baby and poke it when it's sleeping to make sure it's still breathing. It's like that. We are the elders in your life for you grievers. You need to take rest. You may not sleep, yeah. but you need to rest your body. Yeah. You need to unplug from the people, the family, so because your nerve endings are exposed and because you are hypervigilant to everything that's going on, you need to just go in a quiet room and lay down. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to take a nap. You might not take a nap. Your mind might be going through the movie, but at least you're resting your body and recharging your batteries. You need the quiet. I used to, I didn't go in my room and lay down because it was so loud in here. It was impossible. I escape to the front porch. I have rocking chairs on my front porch. Um, this was after Donovan died. And after Austin died, I had two, um, what are those chairs called? Outdoor chairs. I don't know what they're called. And I would 
escape to the front porch. And I, I didn't realize I did both things. I mean, I did the same thing after both boys. It was later in conversation. I realized that, but I needed the quiet and I needed to just have some sort of peace and stillness. I don't know why I needed it. I didn't, I didn't even know that I needed it. I just sought it out. You need to find the quiet spaces, get someone. I wouldn't suggest you driving, uh, right after. Cause it's, you know, you can get You're out of the moment. Yeah. You can lose concentration, get someone to just take you on a drive, turn the radio off and just lay back and just be quiet and be still. You need that to recharge. Yes, I agree with you. Um, grief wears you out. Yeah. Grieving wears you out. And so if you need to take that two hour nap or that five hour nap, or you need to sleep for three days straight, by all means, please do it. Do it. If your body is calling for sleep, it's what it needs, then do it. If your body is telling you not to eat or the, the feeling of uh, hunger never comes, then don't eat. Don't bypass hunger. But if you're not hungry, then don't eat. Your body won't let you starve. It is telling you what it needs in the beginning stages of this healing process. Yeah, your body does know what it needs. Listen to your body. It's going to tell you, like I said, I didn't know me going to the front porch was me seeking solace and quiet. I just knew I needed something and it, I followed my instincts and went and did that. And I very much needed it. I needed it. It was so overwhelming. The, the well-meaning um, family members and friends that descended on our house were we so appreciated, but it was overwhelming. And I needed yes. the quiet. I needed the quiet. So you have to listen to your body. It's going to tell you what you need. So the, um, we know that our brain is sending us at least 40,000 thoughts a day. If during a grieving experience, I believe that doubles because you're not only thinking your thoughts, you're thinking their thoughts as well. Like what you need to do for them and take care of them. So let's say you have 80,000 thoughts a day going through your brain. It's so exhausting. Number one. Number two, the other thing is the brain is perceiving this grief as danger. And so one of the things it wants to do is get you away from this danger as quickly as possible, get you to a safe place. And one of the places it will take you to quite often is sleep. Yeah. So know yeah. that it's okay. But if you got things to do today, you're going to have to resist that grief in order to get those things done. And that's okay too. Right. Whatever yeah. works for you today is okay. You right. ultimately are the one that gets to decide. And don't, don't feel that the tired is making you go into a depression. It, it, you are already going to be sad and to having depressive feelings. It does not yeah. mean you are now a depressed person and you will be for the rest of your life. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Friends, do what your body is calling for at this time. Listen to your body. It knows what you need. And Bye friends. Wait, wait, okay. I was going to say, that's, wait. Because, <laughs> that's because grief is natural. Yeah. Your body knows what it needs because grief is natural. We were yeah. born with the ability to know how to grieve. So that's it. Okay. Listen, listen to your body. Bye friends. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like the little sister trying to get the last word in. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.